topping off of the tallest freestanding structure in the world. Thousands of eyes have been straining upwards, following the dramatic progress of Olga, the giant sky crane. It's the climax to a story of engineering and construction that for Canron began when the Foundation Company of Canada awarded them the structural steel contract for the CN Tower project. Canron is a company that builds things. This is the story of one project by one division of Canron, a project that was to make history. If we go with the helicopter, the whole job has to be designed around it. We've got to install 30,000 bolts in 30 days. The only problem we have with steel is going to be in the, in the antenna itself. If we'll put them together outside, make the one section, then when 10 go up, one section after the other, simulating the erection of the tower up to about the 22nd section. We'll be working about 1,800 feet in the air on this thing, and it's got to fit exact when it goes up. There's got to be no uh, question about that. They're big anchoring bolts. How long are they? They're about 12 feet long. Yeah, they're 12, 14 feet long. Inch, what, two and inch, a half? Inch and a half. Inch and a half. Yeah. We'll need 125 of those. Uh, they're specials all the way. This is going to take about 1,500 tons of steel. In 1973, the Foundation Company of Canada awarded Canron the structural steel contract for the CN Tower project. After months of planning, the groundwork had been laid for what was to be one of the most ambitious and challenging undertakings in the history of engineering and construction. Company's Eastern Structural Division plant in Rexdale, Ontario. Fabrication of the base section for the tower antenna gets underway.
steel beams by the truckload arrive at the tower site. There for the formwork, which will be hoisted to the 1100 foot level of the tower, and for the pod that will contain microwave transmission equipment, two observation decks and a revolving restaurant, and serve as the foundation for the top portion of the world's tallest freestanding structure. When it's completed, the CN Tower will reach the unprecedented height of 1,815 feet. The final 350 feet, the antenna mast, will be made up of a base and 39 sections or cans. The sections will vary in length, but each will weigh approximately seven tons. This is to accommodate the load limit of the giant helicopter that will ultimately lift them into place at the top of the tower. While work continues at the plant, Formed parts, such as corner pieces, are sent out for stress relieving. Detailed pieces are sent out to be galvanized, and all must be coordinated so that the sections return to the plant for assembly at the proper time. By now, the giant structure had reached a height of 1,500 feet, its 50,000 cubic yards of concrete dominating the Toronto skyline. Some 30 iron workers are at the site, moving on thin paths of steel high in the sky requires skill and care. Safety is an important factor in any construction job. On this one, it could be a matter of life or death. 45 cables, each one and one-eighth inches thick, enshroud the tower. At the top, the cathead supports for the cables and jacking system. At the base, the completed formwork for the pod to be hoisted by the cables 1,100 feet into the air. All other work at the tower site halts. As the mass of steel and formwork rises, inch by inch, coaxed upward by the heavy cables. days later, it's in place. The formwork becomes the new point of departure for the Canron iron workers. Their first chore to firmly anchor the formwork to the tower by welding sloping steel columns to the tower wall. While the iron workers at the tower site ply their trade high above the ground, the shopyard assembly crew continues the detailed work of readying the antenna mast sections for delivery.
section will be lifted into place atop the main mast by helicopter. During test yard assembly, these Y-shaped guides didn't provide sufficient rotational flexibility. And after some experimentation, they were replaced by a V-bar system that would precisely orientate the sections as they were lowered into place. Holes are drilled and reamed in the wall plates to accommodate 30,000 high tensile bolts. The bolts are to be fitted at the rate of a thousand a day, so there's no room for error. The sections are completed in groups of five or ten. They're now ready for sub-assembly. Each section must be lifted, placed, and anchored in a matter of minutes. Precision is essential. They're stacked vertically to a height of 100 feet, then checked to make sure they're level and plumb. Two damping devices designed to reduce vibration and sway in the transmission tower are to be installed high on the masthead. Test assembly of the devices satisfies the construction men that here the Y-shaped guides will do the job. Once these steps are completed, the sections are dismantled. The yard assembly crew removes the fit-up bolts. The giant crane lifts each unit and lowers it gently to the ground. Now guides for the sky crane will be attached, splice plates wedged out, and the sections, their main plates coated with corrosion-resistant zinc metal spray, will be ready for delivery to the tower site. The sections undergo a final inspection, first by a Canron field engineer, then by inspectors from the office of the consulting engineers. Each unit is checked to make sure it meets all specifications. The tower, 1,100 feet up. The web of steel that forms the lower level of the restaurant begins to take shape, but the iron workers have a long way to go. It has now been more than a year since the first concrete was poured. As time for the final phase of construction, the erection of the antenna mast draws closer, all eyes are on the calendar and the weather. Wind and snow hamper construction, but don't halt it. The iron workers extend their efforts, working long hours high in the sky, fitting, bolting, and welding the massive network of steel.
The base section of the antenna mast weighs 40 tons. Too heavy for the helicopter with a load limit of 10 tons, it'll be lifted by the tower crane and secured with 125 anchor bolts, 14 feet in length and one and a half inches in diameter. An erection platform designed especially for the CN Tower project is ready to be hoisted into place. It will shield the bolting crews from wind and weather as section by section their work takes them higher into the winter sky. Final testing of the two vibration dampers or radomes is completed. Now they too are ready to be shipped to the tower site. And the most spectacular phase of the entire project is about to begin. The giant Sikorsky S64E Skycrane helicopter Olga, owned by Ericsson Air Crane Company of Marysville, California, has arrived at the tower site. From now on, Olga and her crew will be the stars of the show. Their main task, to hoist and place the 39 sections of the antenna mast. First, they remove the tower crane from the top of the main mast. As the helicopter crew completes its first task, the burden of its final lift is sent on its way to the tower site. The top section of the antenna mast, 32 feet in length, six and a half tons of steel and equipment, can number 39, the section that will bring the tower to its ultimate historic height, bearing the signatures of thousands of schoolchildren and Toronto citizens. Olga's crew gets ready for another lift. One pilot to fly the craft, one, the aft pilot, to guide the load into position from his vantage point at the rear of the flight deck, and one to act as a standby. Completed sections cluster at the base of the tower, awaiting their turn with Olga. helicopter, hovering like a giant dragonfly, continues the unusual airlift, depositing her cargo of steel section by section atop the steadily growing tower. In all, Ogle will make a total of 56 lifts.
As the forward pilot maneuvers the craft into position, the aft pilot guides the sections into place with pinpoint accuracy. The men must work quickly. Olga's flights are locked into a tight schedule dictated by the movement of passenger trains far below. Working to this schedule, she's managed as many as three lifts in less than 15 minutes. In less than 30 days, helicopter and tower crews would accomplish what would have taken six months. Radio communication between the helicopter, the tower, and the men on the ground is an essential part of the operation. The tower has now reached the 1,600-foot level. One of the two giant damper systems is lowered into position. The aft pilot gently and with great precision places the load. The connecting crew anchors it. The aft pilot releases the steel bridle securing the damper, and Olga flies groundward. The connecting crew, perched one-third of a mile above ground, awaits the final lift and the topping off. April 2nd, 1975, topping off day. Olga and her crew are ready. Now the historic moment, the final lift. The tower is about to reach the 1815-foot apex of its long climb skyward. Okay, Larry, come down there now. 
CN Tower, the world's tallest freestanding structure, an invaluable communications asset to the community, a tourist attraction, of course, but also a proud monument to the myriad skills of the planners, designers, engineers, and construction men who built it. Olga, her work done, bids a final farewell and heads for home. is a company that builds things. This was the story of one project by one division. There's more to come. End of